This week's 1044 is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Predatory towing practices have been a hot topic in trucking for several years. How bad is the problem and what can trucking companies do about it? You're watching CCJ's 1044, a weekly webisode that brings you the latest trucking industry news and updates from the editors of CCJ. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you'll never miss an installment of 1044. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jason Cannon and my co-host as always on the other side is Matt Cole. Excessive charges for towing and recovery has seemingly been more and more prominent in the last several years. And new research conducted by the American Transportation Research Institute has shown that a lot of motor carriers are experiencing excessive rates for towing jobs. Atri's research also found that nearly a third of crash-related tows included some form of predatory billing based on an analysis of carriers' records of towing invoices from 2021 through 2023. Joining us this week on the 1044 is Atri Research Associate Alex Leslie, who walks us through the details of the report. First, though, he tells us why Atri took up the research in the first place. It's an issue that that we've heard complaints about for years that motor carriers are concerned about, and that uh, a lot of the state trucking associations are, are very concerned about and have often asked us about, too. Really, part of that big push was that there really just has not been research on this topic at all. You know, sometimes Atri is diving into something where there has been a lot of research and maybe there's a certain angle or a certain perspective that needs to be added. But in the case of predatory towing, there's, there's just so little data because uh, it, it is such a case by case kind of issue uh, that that they really felt it, it was a need to, to be able to get a, a better view of the land, with some actual data. Now, just like the freight transportation side of the trucking industry, ATRI makes it clear in its research that the towing and recovery industry also has its fair share of challenges. You don't have a reliable supply chain or or trucking industry without towing professionals. Uh, You know, the the towing and recovery industry is a is a vital part. Um, And so I don't want to, you know, I want to say up front that, of course, you know, we know that there are a lot of great towing and recovery companies out there. The, the majority of them are behaving well. So they, they do face a number of challenges. Uh, you know, of course, they have to be able to respond to accidents at, at any time in any weather. You know, that, that can be a huge issue. And again, a case by case basis, whatever there's a crash. And on, on top of that, the equipment that they use is, is expensive. Heavy duty rotators and wreckers are, you know, expensive, top of the line, you know, pieces of equipment. And in a lot of parts of the country, they just aren't being necessarily used a ton. So what we found is that something like 45% of companies, towing and recovery companies, operate in a county where there are fewer than 12 annual truck trailer tollway crashes per company. So, you know, if you have a rotator and you're one of those companies, you may only be using it 11 times a year. So that is a challenge to, you know, obviously recuperate value on those assets. Another challenge I'll mention quickly, too, is the prioritization of quick clearance, right? In a lot of states, you have, you know, laws explicitly about this uh, in different jurisdictions at local levels, too. Lots of priority put on getting those roadways clear as quickly as possible. And when that happens, sometimes the the negative side effect uh, of that of that good objective, of course, is that you have over deployment of towing resources, uh, which then might be reflected in a higher bill than what was strictly necessary. Alex explains that Atri's goals for the research were to get a better understanding of what predatory towing is, the regulations around towing, and how often predatory practices are occurring. We'll hear more on that after word from 1044 sponsor, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its after-treatment system has traditionally been a double-edged sword. The same engine oil that is so essential to protecting your engine's internal parts is also responsible for 90% of the ash that is clogging up your DPF and upping your fuel and maintenance costs. Outdated industry thinking still sees a trade-off between engine and emission system protection, and Chevron was tired of it. So they spent a decade of R&D developing a no-compromise formulation. Chevron Lubricants developed a new ultra-low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with Omnimax technology cuts sulfate ash by a whopping 60%, which reduces the rate of DPF clogging and extends DPF service life by two and a half times. 
And just think what you can do with all the MPGs you're going to add from cutting your number of regens. Bedello 600ADF isn't just about after treatment. It provides complete protection, extending drain intervals by preventing oil breakdown. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, and now you don't. 600 ADF from Dello with Omnimax technology, it's time to kick some ash. We really wanted to get a sense for what does the big picture look like? Uh, again, with that total absence of, of data on, on predatory towing, uh, you know, even on just the most basic questions of what even is predatory towing and, uh, you know, what are the regulations out there and, and how often does it even happen? So, for answering those three questions, we really had to sort of split up and, and uh, tackle some separate issues. So we had my coworker, Alexa, was, was digging through all the regulations out there at the state level to build one big compendium of, of what that looks like, which is part of the report. In addition, then we, we carried out a large motor carrier survey where we tried to get that, that broader picture. What are the issues that you're encountering out there? with towing especially but not exclusively after a crash that is the most common case where where towing can become predatory but there are other forms too like impound private property towing for example and then the third big component was the study of towing invoices and, and focusing on predatory billing specifically which was the the most common kind of predatory practice that that we found and, and we were able to focus in on invoices to then really get in on, on that specific issue. But throughout the whole process, on top of that, we were interviewing towing companies that are doing a really conscientious job and insurers who work with this issue, as well as legal experts. So it really is a comprehensive report that touches on a bit of everything. Alex says there are several different types of predatory towing that are commonly experienced by carriers. We looked at, first of all, just the broad level of how many fleets have encountered certain issues. Uh, and, and the most common we found was excessive hourly or, or per pound rates. Um, and, and that could be, you know, th that could be on equipment, that could be on labor. And we saw 82.7% of carriers had encountered that at, at some point uh, in 2021. So, that, you know, again, that's a majority of carriers. And of course, you know, if you're operating a large fleet, you know, that's You've got more crashes, so it's not the carrier level there, but, but that's a very high number. The second most common was unwarranted additional equipment or labor charges. So, so things like over deployment or, or, or being charged for miscellaneous fees uh, that were redundant or, or you know, overhead costs that, that shouldn't have been billed that way. That was about 81, 82% uh, of motor carriers experienced that. But we also saw a majority of motor carriers experience excessive storage rates, vehicle release delays or, or access issues. Cargo release delays is a, is a really big one as well. That impacts, of course, not just the fleet's bottom line with that truck, but also the relationship with, with the shippers, uh, with, with business partners, which can be really uh, detrimental. We saw damage due to the use of improper towing equipment uh, was, was also experienced by about 59% of carriers. Uh, vehicle seizure without cause, uh, about 56% of carriers. Uh, and then misreported tows, um, non-consensual tows reported as consensual was, was another uh, that we saw more than half of carriers encounter. As Alex mentioned, predatory billing practices are the most common issues experienced by carriers. We found that 29.8% of invoices had some form of excessive billing predatory practice, which is which is pretty high. We found that percentage actually goes up as the bills get more expensive too. So the way we approached this was we transcribed all those invoices. We were working with about 500. We, we looked at, okay, when do rates become over 50% more than the median rate? So that, that, that middle rate. And that was the threshold we used to generally. For, for determining whether an invoice was charging uh, a predatory rate. There were a couple line items where we were used twice as high rather than 50% higher, just to help represent the fact that, again, towing companies do have their own costs. Uh, storage costs, for example, vary a lot, uh, depending on what part of the country you're in and what your, uh, you know, what your real estate prices are. So then we looked at each individual piece of equipment or labor or storage, admin fees and miscellaneous costs, and 
and tried to ed- identify, you know, how many were, were in fact predatory. And what we found was that the most common form of predatory billing was miscellaneous costs. We saw those in about 8% of all the invoices that we analyzed. And, and we defined that as, you know, miscellaneous costs is, is any line item, any charge that's basically for something smaller than a skid steer. And then we added those all together for each invoice and, and figured out what percent of the final bill they were. Right? Any invoice that had more than 25% of the total cost in those miscellaneous charges, we considered as, as excessive. Uh, so that can include anything from uh, oil cleanup uh, to you know, drive shaft removal to uh, you know, charges for gloves and, and lights and radios. So again, some of those costs, some of those miscellaneous costs are are going to be inevitable in a lot of crashes, right? Oil cleanup, like that's got to happen. Uh, what becomes excessive is when it's over 25% of that bill, and, and that excludes all hazmat crashes, becomes, uh, you know, becomes predatory in that case. So that was the biggest one, uh, but it was followed pretty closely by equipment rates, those were at 6.3%, and then administrative fees were excessive in 6.5% of the invoices that we saw. You can't talk about crash-related tows without also talking about the impact on insurers and their role in paying for tows, which also impacts carriers. Insurance, of course, is, is a highly involved you know, party in, in these bills because insurance does end up paying uh, a, a large share of towing bills for most carriers. Now, that varies based on several factors, uh, but but they have skin in the game too. Uh, and so they end up uh, usually taking point when it comes to contesting a predatory invoice. And, and we, we found that, you know, again, they're out there contesting uh, a lot of invoices, a little over 50%. As a result, they are often able to negotiate that level down, but that takes time and it costs, of course, money as well. Another factor involved in the insurance question is uh, the fact that if motor carriers don't have uh, all of their coverage, that can be a huge issue. So, you know, towing fees are often involved uh, that they can fall under cargo insurance, they can fall under auto liability, and they can fall under property damage. And so if a motor carrier doesn't have all three of those coverages, then they are going to be on the hook. They're going to have by slow billing processes. That means you're going to have delays in terms of getting your uh, truck back, getting your cargo released potentially. Another factor too is, is if a motor carrier has different insurers for all of those different coverage types, That's you've just got more people in the room who all have to be communicating on those invoices. And, and that process can also lead to much longer delays. And again, that's an area where towing companies aren't necessarily at fault there. Uh, but it's something that the trucking industry can actually do to, to try to prevent uh, you know, these these cases from, from happening in the first place. While some cases of predatory towing are likely intentional on the part of the towing company, Alex notes that's not always the case. And there are some causes that I've already gone through that, that are genuinely not the towing company's fault. Um, Either there's, you know, maybe information has been poorly relayed by the police officer or, or, or whatever other law enforcement uh, or safety uh, personnel might be on the ground. So there are some issues there. It could be, you know, miscommunication. There's something like a quarter of all invoices are not itemized. And so there's a huge gap there in terms of, you know, you've got a bill, but you don't know exactly what it was for. But then, of course, you know, you've got towing companies that are just trying to, you know, they're, they're just trying to skim off the top. You know, they, they have essentially a captive consumer. And so market pressures aren't able to regulate, aren't able to self-regulate those rates. And so that just creates an opportunity for towing companies to either charge higher rates than, than what is, is fair or to charge for, you know, a bunch of extra line items that either weren't used in the actual recovery or towing process, or, or or maybe they're overhead items that are being charged uh, as, as redundant or charging for gloves and radios that have already been paid off, uh, that kind of practice. As of the time of the report, 14 states currently either regulate maximum tow rates for police-initiated post-crash towing or maximum rates for private property towing with varying degrees of effectiveness. 
Maryland uh, did a did a big push uh, just uh, last year for for regulation of uh, police initiated uh, post crash towing. Um, they uh, they uh, restricted per pound billing, which is often a source of, of predatory rates. Um, and they uh, made guidelines for the release of carbon uh, and then created a committee that would review rates uh, and handle disputes. And, and those are several uh, those are several initiatives that, that we recommend in the report as, as ways to potentially stamp down on predatory towing. Um, but what we find is that, you know, it, there are a lot of areas that are not regulated. And then even when there are areas that are regulated, uh, the language of the regulation can often make those regulations under effective. So for example, there are some states that require that receipts be itemized, but not invoices be itemized. But if the invoice isn't itemized, you, you're not going to be able to identify whether there's been a predatory bill on, you know, until it's been paid. So th that is potentially not a very useful regulation. Or another another classic case is regulations might say that motor carriers are allowed to uh, express their, their towing and recovery company of choice after an accident. But if the regulation doesn't actually require or highly emphasize that that choice should be given, unless the entire roadway is blocked or unless, you know, unless it, if it's not explicitly defining those cases where choice should be given or should not be given, it can often just come down to, you know, the officer or, or the public safety official who, who gets to the crash, just they're, they're on the site judgment. They might just send it to a rotation list, you know, just based on first glance to ensure quick clearance. In fact, the preference should be given to the motor carrier. So there are a lot of these areas where, where, you know, there may in fact be an existing regulation, but it, it needs to be sharpened in order to actually become effective. Atrius report also offers recommendations for fleets and drivers to be proactive to help prevent being a predatory towing victim and ways to make sure an invoice is accurate. The most important thing we can recommend is drivers should be taking pictures or video uh, of, of the crash site of the vehicles involved and of the recovery process. Right. So not just focusing on the vehicle itself, but focusing on what does the roadway look like? Are multiple lanes blocked? Are no lanes blocked? And also, you know, how many, you know, is there one wrecker on the site, you know, versus two or three, right? You know, you, you sometimes see cases where two wreckers are billed when in fact only one was ever actually there. So photography, video is, is so important. And again, there are towing companies that do this too for the same reason, but getting the driver in the truck to do that as well is, is really crucial. And then drivers should not be signing any kind of release or, or, or waiver on the highway. They should not be signing anything like that. Uh, that's not their responsibility. It's not their requirement. Uh, and that can actually get, uh, you know, that can get them into trouble later. So they should not sign. Um, now, in terms of how to respond, there, there are, again, several, several approaches to uh, you know, we have published in this report our sort of thresholds for what, you know, we've considered potentially excessive rates that can vary state to state, of course, but but that is one guideline when you're reviewing an invoice. Um, another thing that carriers or their legal representatives can do when reviewing an invoice is, you know, check the, the build mileage versus what the odometer actually says. Check maybe potentially based on what the GPS in the truck says, you know, you can check versus what the towing company billed you versus maybe what they billed in the past or what uh, other towing and recovery companies bill in the same area. You can check police logs again for the time that the recovery process took. So there are a lot of those little recommendations that we make uh, and, you know, put them in a list so that you don't have to hear me rattle them off. Uh, in the full report, there are ways that trucking companies can try to check those invoices to review them for for any potentially excessive charges, and and to try to ideally meet with towing companies and and you know nip that in the bud rather than having to go down the full legal response route, though that again may in fact be the case.
That's it for this week's 1044. You can read more on ccjdigital.com. While you're there, sign up for our newsletter and stay up to date on the latest in trucking industry news and trends. If you have any questions or feedback, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you can catch us again next week.